Here we have example three to do with modular inequalities from the Leaving Cert higher level course. Okay, in this example, we're asked to draw a graph where f of x is equal to modulus of x plus 3 and f of x is equal to modulus of 3x minus 7. Now, I think in the question there's a mistake here. We shouldn't have f of x meaning two different things. So I'm going to call the second function g of x. I want to graph these. We know they're, they're linear in shape, linear moduli, so it's going to be a v shape. Um, so we're going to just set up a little table. So I need three points. The most interesting point, I need to know when f of x is 0. Now in the first one, uh, when x has the value minus 3, f of x is 0. Now I want some values either side of this. So when x is 0, the modulus will be 3. And when x will be maybe minus 6, we'll go 3 the other side. We'd have minus 6 plus 3, in it, which gives me a modulus of 3 as well. And looking at g of x1, well, when would g of x equal to 0? It would be when x has the value uh, 7 over 3. And I want some values either side of this. So when x is 0, the modulus is 7. And when x is 4, which is a little bit bigger than 7 over 3, we'd have the modulus of, uh, of 5. Now let's draw a graph of this. We look in between the two functions, we're going between minus 6 is the lowest value of x and plus 4 is the higher value. And we're going up to the f of x value or y axis because of the third 7. So let's look at graph f of x first. So it has the point minus 6 and 3. It also has the point 0, 3. And it has the point minus 3, 0. So we take out a ruler and we join these dots to make this traditional v-shape of a modular function where we a linear modular function and now we're going to graph i'm going to use blue as the color here to graph g of x so we have 0 7 7 over 3 0 now 7 over 3 is 2 and a third and we have 4 5 and i'm going to use blue to show this function so we graph this function, and we might just label these functions then. So the black line, I'll call that the f of x, and function, and the blue line, I'll just put g of x beside that. And we're asked, so when is the f of x less than g of x? I'm going to mark this off in the highlighter here. So there's the points where it's below the blue line. And we can see that this has something to do with these values of 1, and 5. So we see from the graph that the solution is x is less than 1 but x is greater than 5. Now we would want to do this the algebraic method as well. So we'll write out our inequality that the modulus of x plus 3 is less than the modulus of 3x minus 7. Now we square both sides and this will still be a true statement. So x plus 3 to be squared is less than 3x minus 7 to be squared. So we expand this in the normal way. Now if we subtract 9x squared and add 42x and subtract 49 from both sides, we end up with this. And we can divide everything by 8. And now we're going to multiply by minus 1 or change all the signs, but we also change the direction of the inequality. That's important in that step. Now what we do is we let this, this equal to 0. And if we get the solutions when it equals 0, we'll be able to consider what the solutions of the inequality are. So we factorize it, and we see the solutions are 5 and 1. Now what we need to do is we need to test, and usually we use x equals 0 to test because it's the simplest, and we test it in the, in the basic inequality that I've highlighted in yellow here. So what we're asking is, is 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 5, is that greater than 0? Yes, this is true. So the 0 value is true, and we see 0 is outside of the range 1 to 5, so the outside values are true, not the inside values. So how we write our solution is we're saying x is 
outside of this range. So x must be smaller than 1 and greater than 5. And we see that it's the same answer that we found graphically, which is good.